Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. So a few things I just wanted to update you on in case you're interested. Uh, first off, uh, once again, thank you very much to everyone who is supporting me through the Patreon page that I have set up earlier this year. Um, and so I'm trying to add some new bonus content there. Uh, among other things. And so uh, among the things I've tried is to do the fan commentary track, which is essentially me watching a movie and recording my comments as I watch it. So uh, pretty straightforward, nothing too spectacular in terms of the the depth of the comments that are, I'm making. But uh, so far, I'm having a lot of fun and being able to watch films that I really enjoy. So I've already done the done a commentary for Dr. No, and I did one for Moonraker, and I now I've just uploaded a new fan commentary track, this time for the 1977 horror film directed by Dario Argento, which is called Suspiria. So I have the Suspiria fan commentary. It's the audio. It's a full uh, commentary track. So I've just watched the movie Suspiria, and I was just recording what it is I had to say about it as I was watching it. So if you're interested, my dear friends, the full commentary track is going to be made available to uh, the to my Patreon uh, friends, to my Patreon subscribers, uh, the paid Patreon subscribers. So if you're interested, please go to the Patreon page for more information. But I will give you a, a 20 or 30 minute or so uh, excerpt of the uh, the commentary track for Suspiria that I made after this video, in case you're interested. So uh, I'll give you a little uh, 20 or 30 minutes. I had a lot of fun talking about it, by the way. I love that film, Suspiria. And also, I've been in the Dario Argento kind of mood because of the Severin releases from earlier in the summer, the uh, the really uh, including the film Opera which is another really fantastic work by Argento. So uh, speaking of Severin, just to give you a, a little heads up or an update, I also got this set uh, thanks to a uh, recommendation among, uh, from many people, including my dear friend, Archie Cinema. Uh, and thank you, Archie Cinema, for this recommendation, because so far I haven't finished going through this set, uh, the Bruce Bruceploitation centric uh, set here, volume one, which indicates that hopefully there will be more volumes to come, because so far this is absolutely terrific absolutely terrific. It's like the poster for Citizen Kane. It's terrific, right? So here, it's terrific. This is really terrific. Uh, I, I, I knew that this would be a lot of fun, but I didn't realize just how fun it would be, and it is, and it's really uh, astonishing. This is astonishing, and I'm learning so much about this chapter of, uh, or sub-chapter, or genre, or sub-genre of cinema, uh, and it's a really rich area, a rich pocket of cinema, as I'm beginning to learn from all the packed goodies and supplements and commentary tracks and the documentary, as well as the films themselves that are included with this set. So Severin, I'm I'm very much impressed with uh, with their work. Uh, and thank you very much to, uh, to many uh, who uh, told me about the summer sale last month. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to check it out. So thank you very much, in particular to Tanner at The Horrible Show and Archie Cinema. Thank you so much, my dear friends, as always. And also, uh, upcoming on the YouTube channel will be a discussion of the, uh, the some of the recent Criterion releases, including this, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, the 50th anniversary, uh, the 50th anniversary release, uh, as well as other versions of the film. So uh, just to give you uh, a heads up, this is fantastic. This is a fantastic release. Uh, I cannot wait to speak about this film, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, the Sam Peckinpah film in the context of the Criterion release, but also just talking about the, the film itself. And there are so many versions of the film in this release. And this, I think, will go down as being one of the great releases from Criterion. Uh, it is uh, really really splendid. What a film that is, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Um, and uh, I was uh, watching a little bit. I brought this with me when I was taking my trip to Japan back in July. And I was watching it. And, and all throughout, I was listening to uh, to Bob Dylan. Uh, it was just, I was, oh, it was so rich and filled with uh, contemplations on life and death and uh, the, the the landscape and majesty and and uh, tragedy and uh, betrayal oh my 
goodness, with uh, uh, with uh, James Coburn and Chris Christopherson and Bob Dylan and others. So uh, anyway, yes. And then also, I just wanted to let you know that I, speaking of Criterion, I was able to also, among other things, watch this for the first time uh, last month, uh, courtesy of this Criterion release, the 4K UHD uh, Blu-ray combo of Perfect Days, the Bim Benders film starring uh, Koji Yakusho. Uh, so I saw this for the first time last month on this release, and I've seen it now a number of times, and I have just fallen in love with this film, just as I think many others in the world have. And uh, um, it is a, it is a, a, uh, a, a kind of treasure. Uh, and Yakusho Koji, and Koji Yakusho does such a brilliant job in terms of the central performance that he has here. Uh, his uh, his uh, his um, almost uh, stoic um, grace uh, that uh, is uh, his character seems to embody. Uh, it really shines uh, in every scene that he's in, and it's uh, it's a, a true delight. So. Uh, I'm be looking forward to talking about this one as well as, well as the other Criterion releases of, uh, of since uh, last month. So as you know, I've been trying to go through each of the Criterion new releases as they emerge uh, with a little bit of a time lag there because I need a little bit of time to really explore them as much as I can. So, uh, But anyway, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid and Perfect Days as well as others with Samurai and uh, Farewell My Concubine and others will be uh, on deck in terms of the Criterion collection discussion videos on YouTube. So in case you're interested, my dear friends, I look forward to seeing you at the next uh, video. I'll try to get those up as soon as I can. Uh, but uh, my dear friends, that's it for now. And so uh, thank you so much. And I hope you're enjoying your day. I'll hopefully see you again very soon. But uh, let me end it here. And, and just uh, let me end it with a little bit of a of a an excerpt from the Suspiria fan commentary, the audio commentary that I did, which is available for Patreon subscribers at my Patreon page. The full commentary is available at Patreon, uh, and the information will be a part of the description box here below. But uh, here is an excerpt, uh, uh, which hopefully uh, you might enjoy uh, if you are a fan of the film Suspiria. Uh, but anyway, my dear friends, uh, thank you so much, and until the next video, please continue to be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies. Well, thank you. And here is the Suspiria excerpt. Thank you. Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you, or not video, this fan commentary track, excuse me. Where am I? I'm, I apologize. This fan commentary track finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. So yes, I'm sitting in front of my monitor, uh, my TV screen, uh, with a disc in the player. It is my Synapse Films uh, release of the Dario Argento film, which is known as Suspiria. So here we go, Suspiria. Um, Right, it's a, a really scary film, but what I'm told, you know, the only thing more terrifying than the last 12 minutes of Suspiria are the first 92. Uh, and so, uh, yes, I, I am borrowing from uh, my, uh, my many watches of this film, my many watches of the trailer of this film, Suspiria. I love this film, uh, and I have a huge admiration for the works of Dario Argento, in particular, or specifically, or for example, this film from the late 1970s, Suspiria. Uh, and so what I propose to do is to talk a little bit about my thoughts and comments on this film as I watch it for, I don't know how many, I don't know what, I've seen it so many times I've lost count, but uh, let me play it and just uh, talk uh, to you, my dear friends, as I watch it again. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, yes, hopefully you will watch it along with me. Now, I don't claim to have the greatest insight or knowledge into this film. I'm not going to talk about the history or the production details or anecdotes or making of the film or anything like that. I'm just talking about it as a fan and just my feelings and thoughts about this film as a fan, having seen this film so many times since I was little. Uh, now here we go, watching it once again. Uh, and so I am very excited. I have my disc in the player. It's set at 0000. It's the version with the English language opening. Uh, and so maybe at the count of three, two, one, go, 
uh, let us press play together and we will be aligned and we can uh, begin our journey into Suspiria. So my dear friends, are you ready? Do you have your version or disc of Suspiria in the player? And is it set to zero, 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 zero? If so, I'm going to count down and let us begin at the end of the countdown. So let's begin at three, two, one, go. And we're off and running. Salvatore Argento presents, yes, in this wonderful font, which kind of looks like the, the font for the Godfather films, you know? It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like smoothed out. Or what is it, sans serif version of the Godfather font? Or is it the other way around? I forget. But um, I, wanna, I really want to have this font on my computer. I want to have this font and I want to have the Godfather font on my computer so I can type up my, my contracts for work. Could you imagine reading a contract and it's in the Suspiria font? Oh my goodness, that would make me want to sign it immediately. But anyway, uh, and we're off with the the great drum roll bit that opens the the first part of the opening credits and then goes into the very famous uh, Suspiria theme and then we've got this this random guy <laughs> telling us about Susie Banyan and uh, wanting to study dance and she leaves uh, Kennedy Airport uh, at 9 a.m. And then she arrives at 10.40 p.m. local time in Germany. So you have all the information from a random guy. It's really great. I wish credits had more random guys just giving us information, you know. Uh, I think that would be really helpful. Uh, because, you know, when you watch a film, it, it, there are all these gaps, you know. When I watch, a, for instance, what, like, I, don't get me wrong, I love the films of Christopher Nolan, but I must admit, every once in a while, or maybe even more than that, when I watch a Christopher Nolan film, I'm lost. I have no idea what's going on. So what I really would love is to have some random guy tell me all the details over the, the credits. That would be really good. Although I think Christopher Nolan films usually have their credits at the end, so maybe that would be a bit too late. But uh, anyway whose voice would maybe Michael Caine's voice could be random guy giving us all the, the inside information about, about Oppenheimer or something. But in any event, okay, going back to Suspiria. Here we go. Uh, and the the drums, uh, which are really great, and then the music, which can, comes back with, with uh, Jessica Harper, Susie Banyan now arriving, which we understand is 10.40 p.m. or so. Maybe it's a little bit later because uh, it takes time to uh, 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 get off the plane and, and customs and stuff. So maybe it's around 11, maybe 11.30 or so, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, now we've got, yes, the close-up of the automatic door and then the, the mechanism. And one thing I must say is, does anyone have an umbrella in Suspiria? Does anyone own an umbrella? Um, or is this something that the witches do in Suspiria? You know, do they, they the witches cast spells and they make people, uh, they, 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 put curses on people and they kill people with spells and they control dogs and things like that. But not only that, they, they cast spells so all the umbrellas in the world disappear. My goodness. What I wouldn't give for an umbrella if I were in Susie Banyan's position right now. Can you can you look at this? Look, although, you know, I must say the wind is pretty intense, so maybe the umbrella wouldn't matter because it would just, uh, you know, fly off in the wind. Anyway, uh, she is very brave, Susie Banyan, to, to weather this weather. <laughs> this is uh, quite intense indeed. Uh, and I love the little bit about how she expects the taxi driver to give her a hand with her luggage, but the taxi driver ain't going to have it. <laughs> so uh, he's not going to get wet in the rain. Uh, and now she's in the taxi, um, and she wants to go to Eschestrasse. And I love the taxi driver here. What? What? Huh? What? Eschestrasse? Huh? Eschestrasse. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I like his raincoat. He has a yellow raincoat. It reminds me of the the, the Gordon's Fisherman ad. I think he looks like the Gordon's Fisherman, uh, the the taxi driver. I like how he kind of kind of I'm not sure he's kind of feigning not knowing English or not understanding what Susie Banyan's saying. I think Susie Banyan's. Um, Pronunciation is not so bad, actually, when she says Esserstrasse. You know, I'm not a speaker of German, I don't know, but it sounds like it's not so bad. So I don't know why the taxi driver is pretending he doesn't understand what she's saying. Because a little bit later, she's asking, you know, has it been raiding long? And she, he doesn't pretend to not understand what she's saying. She understands what he said because he, he'll say, half an hour. So I don't know what's going on with that Esserstrasse bit. But oh well, he's grumpy. He's grumpy. Uh, shown by the fact that he won't help Susie Banyan carry her luggage into the taxi. But I don't blame him because it's raining heavily. It's raining cats and dogs. You see that? You see that? She asks her the, him the question. 
half an hour, he says. So he understood what he said, what she said, but uh, but she didn't under he didn't understand what she said when she said Eschestrasse. So go figure. All right, so we've got already the mood is set, you know, the close-up of the, you know, close-up of the rain, flashing light, uh, close-ups of the water going in drains. Oh, spooky, scary water going into drains. This is scary stuff. And then the woods and a little bit of the goblin, quatch, quatch, quatch stuff uh, going, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't have enough clues already um, to, how should I put it? If you arrive in a place like this and you're hearing goblin music and it's raining heavily and it's flashing lights, turn around and get on the next plane out of there immediately because you're headed for trouble otherwise. So I don't know what Susie Banyan's thinking, but she's headed for trouble. She doesn't realize it yet, but she's headed for trouble. But oh well, that's good for us as viewers because if uh, that were if she uh, turned around and went home, we wouldn't have a movie that is this masterpiece that it's Suspiria. So good on Susie Banyan for sticking around as long as she has. And I love the bit too about did you see that as they approach the school and you see the what we assume are the headlights of the car. On the wall, they look kind of like eyes on the wall, which is really, really creepy. Okay, now we've got the secret. Saw it beyond the door, right? Or behind the door. Three irises turn the blue one. Of course, we don't know what she's saying, although we kind of do if we've seen this for like a hundred times. And then she runs off uh, into the rain out of the school. That's Pat Hingle. Now, again, remember, there are no umbrellas. What What is it with, um, you know, Suspiria and no umbrellas? Have the witches taken all the umbrellas out of here? But like, if I were Pat Hingle, at the very least, I would run out with an umbrella. Uh, but oh well. Oh well Pat, you know, and that's another thing to Pat Hingle. She has a lot on her mind, of course. Not only is she thinking about the witches, not only is she thinking about the irises, uh, not only does she use that ex precise moment of opening the door out onto a rainstorm just before she leaves. She uses that moment to tell the person on the other side about the secret of the iris. It's not before, but just at that point, that's most noisiest. So she's got a lot on her mind, but also her name is Pat Hingle. And if you know your Batman, Tim Burton, Batman movie history, my dear friends, and in fact, Joel Schumacher as well, you'll know that Pat Hingle is the name of the actor who portrays Commissioner Gordon in Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and a personal favorite of mine, Batman and Robin. And so whenever I see this film and I think about Pat Hingle, who is this young woman who is now walking through the woods uh, towards some place, maybe nearby the school, um, I always think of Commissioner Gordon in the Batman movies. And so I always imagine whenever I see the scene and the, what will happen a little bit later to Pat Hingle uh, and Pat Hingle's demise, I always imagine what this film would have been like had Commissioner Gordon been in this particular role and, and Commissioner Gordon and the glass and the, help me. Could you imagine it? And then maybe Batman comes in and tries to save the day, you know. Um, yeah. I'm Batman. All right. Now, take a look at this. Now, this has been remarked upon so many uh, times, but this architecture and that glass and the elevator and the red diamond or the triangle and the blue, the, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I just, I think I just get a headache from all the, the intense color stimuli that's just happening with me if I were to walk into this uh, apartment building. I don't know. I, I'd want to wear sunglasses just to black out all the intense technicolor uh, coloring here because it's just super intense. Uh, but that's part of the charm that Suspiria, you know, the intensity of the colors, the primary colors, reds, yellows, blues, uh, that are just occupying the entire place. I mean, it's like a, it's a fairy tale. That's what it is. It's a fairy tale, uh, uh, fairy tale come to life or a fairy tale nightmare come to life. Uh, and uh, that's one of the great strengths of this, and it, it's uh, reaching at something like primordial and very, uh, very much fundamental. Uh, the things that scare us as a, as children, uh, those fairy tales with a biting edge and and and, and, and razor sharp teeth, uh, and the like. And note too, the if you look through the window in this room, the laundry that's hanging outside on the clothesline. Wasn't it raining like ten minutes ago? So I don't know what the. I hope that laundry wasn't out there while it was raining. Uh, I'd like to think that, uh, yeah, uh, maybe her friend put that out, put that out uh, after the rain stopped, but I don't know. Or, um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't put that outside when it's raining, uh, but that, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it, maybe the wind, yeah, they, she, they're remarking about how the wind's really strong, so so maybe they want to put the, uh, the, I mean, you know, laundry on clotheslines at night uh, could dry out really quickly if the wind's strong, I, I acknowledge that.
All right, and so we have, yes, the uh, the start of one of the most intense scenes in any Adario Argento flick, beginning with the, yes, this relentless pulsating score from Goblin uh, with the lingerie uh, and the pantyhose there, the black pantyhose, uh, you know, uh, very ominously situated outside the window there. Uh, and Pat Hingle, uh, again, with Batman vibes, uh, just looking about, wondering, perhaps thinking, imagining, on edge, tense, nervous, Perhaps something might happen. Perhaps she heard a noise, or perhaps not. She's certainly on edge. A lot has been happening. And probably she's looking around, too, seeing if there are any irises on the wallpaper there. She's probably just on double edge, just seeing if there are any irises. If she does, she's probably thinking, oh my gosh, I want to get out of here. I should turn the iris. It's going to open a secret doorway. Look at that. Uh, look at that wallpaper. I mean, they're birds, but they look kind of like irises and that. That, that kind of statue thing there on the left-hand side of the frame, I never noticed it before. It's kind of this huge, almost almost phallic-like uh, statue. I'm not sure what that is. Very interesting design. Uh, but the design layout here of uh, all the rooms in Suspiria, that's one of the great joys of watching this in terms of the design and the visual design. Uh, each room has its own character. Uh, and uh, that is definitely true for uh, Pat Hingle's friend here. Uh, and look at that desk and the armoire, and oh, it's lovely. And then it's topped off by the blowing in the wind of the of the uh, the, the the lingerie and the, the pantyhose that's drawing. And we see a kind of silhouette behind the the the, the drying lingerie, uh, which makes it even more ominous. Uh, and so uh, it is. Uh, going to introduce us to the glowing eyes, the kind of cat-like eyes, cat's eyes, which is a very scary thing. Again, remember the, the bit when the car drove up, the taxi drove up to the school at the very beginning, the, the headlights on the wall almost looked like eyes. So again, these eyes motifs are, are, are and here we go, the hairy, hairy hand, uh, really, really hairy. And yes, the this, this scene with her face being pushed against the glass, um, it's both funny and scary at the same time. I mean, you, you know, if, if you turn down the volume and just, I don't know, play different music, like, uh, like music out of, I don't know, um, the Three Stooges, it would look like a, f a comedy, right? Because it's, it's, it looks just funny on its face. But it's really scary if you're listening to goblin music and watching it and then seeing the close-up of the night and hearing knife and hearing the screams of Pat Hingle. Ah, you know. So it's really kind of a mixture of emotions, laughter, intense blood, gore, violence. It's all over the place. And that's the thing about Dario Argento is that he's just taking you all over the place. You know, when you watch a Dario Argento film, sometimes it seems so absurd. It's it's just ludicrous. It's just, it's, it looks funny and, and you want to laugh out loud. You know, that happens a lot in a Dario Argento film. And I would say that that bit with Pat Hingle and her face being pressed against the glass, that has a kind of comic look to it. But of course, it's very violent and very, very scary. Uh, but the comic... Uh, Elements are added on to the, by the fact that if you remember Pat Hingle from, from Batman, it makes it even funnier. Imagine Pat Hingle's face being, being crunch, scrunched up against the glass there. And then, of course, these stab wounds and the, the goblin music are, are really quite intense. And it's, it's quite gross. And then the close-up of the heart. Um, and, uh, yes, uh, you know, with uh, uh, the glass and the bloody nature of this and the head out the, the, the glass there. And you have a little bit of the eyes and... And uh, the friend saying, help me, help, there's a murderer, there's a murderer. I mean, it's just intense. And of course, the friend standing there at the precise wrong point of the lobby, because as you know, the glass just totally obliterates her. Pat Hingle's dead in a bloody, gory, uh, disgusting situation. I mean, it's a terrible bit of violence that's happened to her and the like. And here we have, again... Uh, one of the most famous or infamous scenes in a Dario Argento film, the murder of Pat Hingle and friend to open uh, Suspiria, to introduce us to the world of Suspiria. Uh, it's a very intense uh, world indeed. Uh, yes, and just, uh, I mean, the colors are like paint, uh, but they're also blood. Uh, Pat Hingle is screaming, cursing, and the like, and uh, nothing to do uh, but uh, become uh, the ultimate... Uh, horror film victim here, and yes, and what it what is it to welcome us at the calm after the storm? Uh, but yes, the pianist, the blind pianist, 
and his dog. What a great image. And it's sunny, it's the next day, and everything is peaceful and tranquil at the dance academy. Right? Together with the blind man and his dog. And Susie Banyan, too. Look at that shawl. I love that shawl. And she's smiling. She's happy. No, did she walk there? She did. That's kind of a long walk. I hope, I hope it wasn't that long. Good on her. I mean, she's athletic. Or after all, she's she's a, a highly skilled dancer. So she's very athletic. And then look at this with this blue this blue background and the red in the corner and the white. I and mean, this blue looks like uh, David Lynch's blue velvet opening credits. You know, um, this is great. And then the, those statues with the plants out of their heads. This is this is really great. Now I don't know. I mean, I'm saying it looks great and all. Uh, it looks beautiful and ornate and all. But I don't know about you. I don't know if I'd want to have this kind of decoration in my own bedroom. You know, if I if I had this kind of wallpaper, I don't know if I'd be able to sleep because of all the stimuli just just overexciting my brain. You know, all this color I just can't can't fall asleep. But anyway, yes. Gosh. All right, and we have. The introduction of uh, Madame Blanc, yes, and Miss Tanner, Madame Blanc. Oh, this is a wonderful combination. Look at this. Yes. Oh, Carol Banyan's niece is Susie Banyan. Thank goodness. And Albert in the background, they're reading. Albert has really great, uh, um, his, he's got really great uh, posture. Um, great, you know, his, his back posture is very straight. I, I, I'm very jealous of uh, Albert's uh, posture. I wish my posture was, were as good as Albert. I think that would really prevent me from, uh, from uh, suffering from, uh, from certain back issues that I have. They're not serious, but I'm sure they would be remedied if my posture were as good as Albert's. And here, yes, we have, yes, uh, the news that Pat Hingle was brutally murdered last night. So, again, we have uh, uh, the, the brutality of the rain, the brutality of that taxi driver, and then the brutality of the news that Pat Hingle was murdered. And then um, I'm, I'm sure Susie Banyan, I mean, this is late 1970s, and this is before the release of Tim Burton's Batman, but I'd like to think that Susie Banyan had already seen Batman in the theaters, and she's thinking, is that, is that Commissioner Gordon? And she's right now thinking about Commissioner Gordon. 